Hello, welcome to my heat pump installation video. Um, here we have the unit. It is a Samsung Gen 7 R290 and it's a 5 kilowatt model. Um, the good thing about this uh, R290 refrigerant is it can reach higher temperatures than the R32, um, which would be quite useful um, if I show you the rest of the setup. Um, also, I believe the R290 has a lower um, like pollution index, whatever it's called, so that's quite good as well. Um, we have a look, we can see here it's got this isolator and it's got all the pipe board there. I used to have the, um, the hose there, but I managed to keep it there and I can still have access. You can see they've installed a, I don't know if you can see it, but there is an antifreeze valve. There's actually two antifreeze valves on, on floor and return in case the, um, the water reaches a freezing temperature and in that case it would actually leak instead of freezing the whole circuit which would be quite bad um, so we go to the other side um, you can see the rest of the um, pipe wall all insulated which is good and then we can have a look at the inside of the installation in a second here we are so you can see all the all the pipe work, um, just quite a bit, but it's to be expected when you need to have a uh, water cylinder as well. Um, as you can see, this is not the usual uh, water cylinder. Cylinder, sorry. This is uh, is what I call a phase change store. In this case, is uh, Sonamp. Um, basically, what it does is instead of storing water. It contains a uh, material that can absorb heat much better than water. So what it means is that you can have a basically a water tank of water in a much smaller um, size, which means it's quite good here because I didn't have that much space, so it managed to fit it quite nicely there, as you can see, and still have space to access behind and put the washing machine and stuff. So that's quite nice. Um, so what you do with these units is you need to um, charge them um, by obviously using the, the heat pump. So um, basically you need to set up the heat pump to reach about um, 65 degrees in order to fully charge it. So that's what I was saying is quite good that this the, uses the heat pump uses the R290 because it can reach up to 75, temp 75 degrees temperature and definitely can reach uh, 65 at any minus 10 or 15 temperatures so they should be quite good to always be able to charge it it does contain a um a heat element inside in case it needs a bit of a push but uh hopefully i don't need to use that um and yeah you can see here you have the controller for the uh, samsung at the top i had my uh, old two nest thermostats which, to be fair, I used to have two zones. Um, the valves actually used to be up there, but now is one open loop, which is I think is actually better for performance for the heat pump. So you have enough um, volume of water, so it doesn't need any um, additional uh, additional volumizer or anything like that. So as you can see, there is no there's no um, loss header or volumizer. It's just straight uh, connected into the um, the pipes up there. Um, yeah, that needs some painting, but that's fine. Um, so we can have a look, and you can see here. This is where the um, you can see that that's where the flow and the return comes at, from outside the house. So it's actually quite close to the unit. It's actually there. You can see. So it's quite nice because then it means that the losses are minimized. The heat losses. Everything is insulated as well. So you have the the, um, the flow sensor for the Samsung and then it goes um, up into a diverter valve. So it goes either into the Sonam to charge it or into the central heating system. Um, there's also here, um, well, yeah, so that's on the, 
on the uh, flow. There's also a sensor there at the bottom there, and that's for the um, open energy monitoring. So that's quite useful to monitor in your uh, COP, your coefficient of performance, um, because it's a bit tricky to just monitor it with the um, with the data from um, from Samsung. It doesn't provide as good monitoring as as the Open Energy System does. So that's install the meters on the return, and then it's got a sensor on the on the flow, and it's able to calculate with the flow rate. Temperature goes in, temperature goes out, it's able to calculate the COP, which is quite nice. It also needs to have some uh, meters, uh, electric meters, to calculate the input energy that goes in. So I can show you that in a bit. But yeah, so you also obviously have the pump here on the return for the Samsung. I think it's a PM, PWM um, pump, so Samsung is able to, the Samsung heat pump is able to, mon to modulate the um, the flow rate to achieve that delta 5 that is quite good for heat pumps. Um, so yeah, we have the, the control board here. Uh, you have the Wi-Fi kit, which is good to be able to use things like smart things. And then if you're a bit more technical, you can use their API with Home Assistant to do some automation, which is what I end up doing. In here, we have a, a relay. So this is quite interesting because in order to get the sun amp to use the, um, the heating element inside, as I was telling before, you need to send him a signal to tell it to start. And the controller has a way to boost, to, to engage a booster heater. Um, but that's actually a three kilowatt load that it can put in. Well, like this just needs a small, you know, a small uh, contact to close. So you use a, a relay that gets an input in and it opens or closes the other circuits. In this case, it closes the circuit on the uh, on the sun amp and then it's able to to tell it to start the um, the booster mode or the heating lemon inside to to give it a, a bit more if it needs to. Um, then this also connects into the unit to the temperature sensor probe. Um, it is a little bit different than a usual water cylinder because that would uh, you would actually put the probe inside the cylinder and then that will measure the temperature of the water and then the, the you know the Samsung unit can determine if it needs to fill up the tank or not or needs to stop. But this is different because this has its own temperature sensor in it. And then it needs to send a signal to the Samsung unit to tell it when it reaches the um, the point that it wants, basically it's full. So it's actually a bit binary because it just tells it, oh, I'm not full yet or I'm full. And it does that by tricking the temperature sensor into going from you know 39.5 degrees or 77 degrees. So I believe when it's eight, when it's um, twenty percent depleted. So 80% full, <laughs> depends how you want to say it. Then it sends a signal to Samsung and say, oh, actually you can top me up a little bit. And that way you can, um, yeah, you can, you can use it with the heat pump to fill it up. Um, what else? So you have here, this is to, um, I believe uh, this is to fill up the, the loop and it's got a, um, what do you call this? A, like a small tank in case there's pressure so the water can go in when it goes hot and or cold and it can you know yeah so that's for that um here we have the this is the cold water going down and then there's a mixing valve you need to have a mixing valve with this one apparently for regulation purposes because the water can come out quite hot i think it probably comes out at 65 degrees and this uh, modulates between 45 and 55 degrees so this unit is actually um it's called the Sonam X Plus 210. I think it's, it's supposed to be around 300 liters at 40 degrees out. So it's quite it's quite decent size and um, it, uh, it definitely enough for me. Um, the minute I'm living with someone, but yeah, usually it's just me. And that, yeah, that is plenty um, of uh, energy for that. Um, what else? So we have here, this is the... Um, the hydro flow is supposed to reduce the lime scale and stuff like that in the pipes 
which is fair enough. Um, it's a bit annoying noise that it makes. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's kind of like a buzzing noise, but it's fine because this is in the cupboard and well, in the utility room, so I don't really hear it too much from my bedroom or anything, but it's fine. Um, and then it goes to the consumer unit here. I got my solar panels and my batteries, which is obviously quite useful um, to be able to take advantage of the different uh, tariffs. If you've got Octopus, you can use Octopus Flocks or Octopus Cozy as well, which is something that I'm looking into to see if it's actually better than Flocks. Maybe not in the summer, but in the winter, definitely, because I can top up the batteries twice during the day and two different occasions and uh, then use the heat pump during the day and you know benefit from low rates no matter the time of the day and yeah in here oh, in here you have the the meters so these are the sdm 120 meters that use are used by the um you can see the air source heat pump and indoor unit so you can monitor both um what the what the pump is uh, is putting or is taking from the power and what the uh what the heat pump is as I was saying, with the um, with that and the heat meter is able to calculate the COP, which is quite good. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, I can make any other videos if someone is interested in how things are connected and configured and stuff like that. Um, actually, um, let's have a look at the unit inside, the control, uh, remote controller. There you go. So here is the remote controller. You can see it shows you the uh, current, the temperature inside, the temperature of the water outlet, the temperature being set up. And if you go back, you can see the temperature outside as well. It's quite warm today. You can see the uh, domestic hot water is off at the minute. And as I was saying before, you can see here, they just says 77.2. So this will change between 77.2 and 39.4 or something like that um, in order to know if you need to fill it up a bit more or not. Um, but then you yeah, you just set the temperature to something below that, but above 39, and that should be enough to fill it up. Um, and yeah, so yeah, so that was pretty much it. If you want to go into more detail, uh, curious about you know the settings for it and or more about the sun and how it's connected. I can make additional videos. Um, I can also show a little bit my setup on Home Assistant if, if anyone's interested. Um, but yeah, hope um, you find it useful and let me know. Thank you. Bye.